Hello, my name is Stacy Fayant, and in this video, you will see some images of Indigenous cultural tattoos I have done on myself and others, and a video of me doing a hand-poked and skin-stitched tattoo on my leg. I will share some information on Indigenous cultural tattooing, and some information about myself, my background, and my thoughts on tattoo. As an artist, I create in many different mediums, and in recent years was trained with Earthline Tattoo Collective to be an Indigenous cultural tattoo practitioner. Many people are not aware of the tattoo traditions of Indigenous people here in what we currently call Canada. I did not know for most of my life. Earthline Tattoo Collective is an important part of the revitalization of tattoo traditions on Turtle Island. I am honored to do my part to help with that revitalization. I am trained in hand poke tattoo technique and skin stitch technique, both of which were practiced here prior to colonization. A very important part of my practice is health and safety. We talk about our tattoos as being medicine and therefore it is incredibly important to give these tattoos in the safest way, using the best practices and highest standards of tattooing in the world. Some of the dangers of tattoo are exposure to bloodborne pathogens, such as HIV and hepatitis, and risks of infection and exposure to bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, like methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. I recertify in my bloodborne pathogens certification every year and keep on top of what I must do to maintain as safe a practice as possible. Here you will see that I'm putting on a stencil before I tattoo. I have prepared this stencil ahead of time, trying it on a few times to make sure it's exactly what I want. This tattoo is a tattoo of choke cherries, which are an important part of my life. I have cleaned my leg, shaved off any hair, and made sure everything is safe and ready to go. I've practiced putting on the stencil a few times beforehand so that I know exactly where I want it. At this point, I'm starting the hand poke portion of the tattoo. I begin by dotting in the entire portion that will be hand poked so that I don't lose my stencil. In this video, the majority of the tattoo is hand poked in black ink. The stem and inner leaf are skin stitched with green ink. I use the same types of needles a tattoo artist in a mainstream tattoo shop would use and the highest quality tattoo ink. People sometimes ask, why I don't use thorns, bones, sinew, and charcoal, and other things that would have been used by my ancestors. I believe that it is very important to learn as much as possible about how our markings were made prior to colonization, but I don't have the knowledge yet on how to use those things safely. As well, we live in different times, with perhaps different dangers, disease, and risks. This is why I use the tools I use. As you can see, I'm still dotting in the tattoo. So at this point, I won't wipe away the ink too much because I don't want to lose my stencil, especially the portion I'm going to hand stitch after I dot this in. I've wiped a bit from the leaf just to make sure that the ink is going in so that I'll be able to see it afterwards. We know that traditional Indigenous tattooing had various functions. Tattoos were used for self-adornment, they were used as medicine, and they were used as identifiers. Identifiers of one's community, age, and life experiences. As medicine, they were used to ward off migraine, 
to keep safe against bad spirits, to cure arthritis, and many other things. And of course, they were used for self-adornment, which I feel connects to self-love. Much writing about tattoos, especially women's tattoos, talks about this idea of self-adornment in a very negative way. And I would like to point out that this idea of vanity, of self-adornment as negative, is a Western European notion that connects vanity to the fe feminine and as such is demonized. I am Métis, Cree, and Soto on my father's side and French on my mother's side. I was raised in the Métis community in Regina, Saskatchewan. I am a member of the Papikasis First Nation, but like many Indigenous people, my familial background is more complicated than that. My grandma Doris was from Muscapeding First Nation. I can only assume she fell in love with my grandpa, Super Duper Sal. He was a Métis trapper. When they married, she lost her treaty status. He passed away when my dad was nine and my grandma remarried and regained her status through that marriage. As a result, my treaty status has me listed as a member of my step-grandpa's band, Papikasis. This is a story of how our identities are shaped by outside powers. Our connections as Indigenous peoples were severed and replaced according to the government's whims. When I tattoo, I am often thinking about connection, physical connection, emotional connection, community, family. I have tattooed my sister, my mom, my cousins. I think about my aunties when I tattoo, how they were never given this option, truly, because for their generation, tattoo was still talked about as taboo, as savage. If they wanted to be respected in Canada, tattoo was not a way to do that. That's about control, control of body, control of beliefs, control of safety, control of how we see ourselves, how we relate to each other. My dad and his sisters and brother went through a lot. Racism, poverty, violence, addictions. And I know that they didn't have the space to talk about these things that I do now. It wasn't an option. My grandma didn't have the space to talk about the things she went through, the things she saw in her life. No world, no community is perfect, but communities create ways to help each other, to hold each other. Those things were taken away from Indigenous peoples when they were colonized. The things that hold people up, get them through, help them heal and metabolize trauma. Tattoo is one of those things. I bring it back in an effort to help myself heal, in an effort to help my family heal and reconnect. Because trauma displaces people from each other, makes us fear each other, builds walls between us. Tattooing builds community. It is love and connection, helping each other, building each other up. At this point in the tattoo, I am beginning to stitch the stem. Stitch technique was used for many women's tattoos and was a technique used by women. Women's chin tattoos are seen on indigenous women in many parts of the world. And in this part of the world, they were skin stitched. Chin tattoos are given as a coming of age tattoo when a girl becomes a woman. They show that this person has grown up and is ready to take on the responsibilities and duties of an adult. Many Indigenous women are getting their chin tattoos now, now that we have become aware of the tradition. They are a means of asserting our identity as proud Indigenous women, and of taking control of our bodies and our own beliefs about beauty. A skin stitch tattoo has a different look to a, to a hand poke tattoo. A hand poke tattoo will look darker and sharper while a skin stitch tattoo is a bit cloudier. It's more ephemeral. <laughs> skin stitching can be a very difficult technique to learn. The aim is to get the stitch 
in the first few layers of skin. Going too deep will cause the ink to disperse too much and will look like a bruise. Going too shallow will cause the needle to break through the skin. Different areas of skin can be easier or harder to stitch. Sometimes it feels like the needle is sliding through butter. And sometimes it takes a lot to get that needle through. Some areas of a person's body being stitched won't feel like anything. And other areas can be quite painful. People ask me how much their tattoo will hurt and how long it will take. On different parts of the body, tattoos will hurt more or less, but it can also be affected by what you are carrying. What you may need to let go of, what the marking is. It may hurt more or less because of these things. The pain is the work we do. It is an opportunity to learn and heal. And in terms of time, every tattoo is different. I ask people to have the whole day available, be ready to spend a whole day with me, sharing food and stories. And if we finish early, then you have the gift of free time, which we often don't give ourselves. When my father passed away, my Auntie Phyllis honored me with the gift of a star blanket. Star blankets are given at times of life-changing events, births, deaths, graduations. This star blanket Auntie Phyllis gave me was made by my grandma Doris, who had passed away some years before my father. Just as the gift of a star blanket is an honor given to mark life-changing events, tattoos functioned and still function in the same way. I think that nowadays, having been colonized, having had many of our original traditions taken away, having been disconnected from our communities and our people, any cultural gift becomes a healing gift. So when my auntie gave me that star blanket, that act healed me a bit. It told me I was a part of my family and community. It is a welcoming into a circle. Those are very precious times for me. When I tattoo someone, we recreate a connection, both physical and emotional or spiritual, that was asleep for a while. This is comforting, healing. People often ask me about ceremony in tattooing, and I think people sometimes expect a very dramatic ceremony of some sort. And depending on the person's nation, Depending on what their elders directed us to do, there may be specific things we need to do during, before, or after the tattooing process. But for me and my practice, the ceremony, the sacred, are, I suppose, quite basic. The welcoming, the sharing of time and space, food and drink, the touch being together during pain and change, telling our stories to each other, taking care to be safe and healthy in my practice. And most of all, and what all of that encompasses, is love. The act of loving someone, whether I've known them my whole life or I've just met them because they needed a marking. That is sacred. That is is ceremony. Passing on knowledge to my daughter, that is sacred. The ability to pass knowledge on to children was taken from my ancestors. A line of knowledge severed. A line of love severed. So revitalizing those things that we pass on to our children, to people we meet, Revitalizing spending time together, touching each other in a healthy, beautiful way that is full of respect and honor. That is what tattooing is for me. Revitalizing our own beliefs about beauty. 
revitalizing our own ability and right to take care of each other and have safe spaces together. That is tattoo. Taking our bodies back as ours to modify and decorate as we see fit. That is tattoo. So after finishing up the stitch portion of the tattoo, I'm going back to hand poke the rest of the tattoo, darkening the lines and perfecting it. I need to be careful while I do this, how I wipe the ink away because black ink being darker than the green ink in the stitch portion could fill those open stitches with black ink. And I don't wanna lose the green. You can see here that I've put some Vaseline over the stitched portions of the tattoo just to help protect it a bit, put a barrier between the black ink and the stitch tattoo. I'm filling in the berries with dark black ink and filling in large spaces with black ink is sometimes my favorite part of a tattoo. Lastly, I'd like to say that I believe it is important for everyone to help in this revitalization of Indigenous tattooing. I am one person and I need help. If you have knowledge that you can share about tattooing from a relative or elder, I would love to hear it. If you work in a museum and have access and knowledge about researching tattoo traditions, please share it with me and with all the other Indigenous cultural tattoo practitioners who are working on this revitalization. It took a lot of people to take away our traditions. And therefore, we need a lot of people to help us bring them back. So this is the last part of the tattoo. I've wiped away most of the ink and tried to clean it up as much as I can. And then I'm just going in and making everything perfect. So just finding little spots that need a touch up. Making sure it's exactly how I want it to be. So thank you for watching this video today. Thank you for learning about this practice. And thank you to the Saskatoon Public Library for giving me this opportunity to share some knowledge about Indigenous tattooing practices.